Now coming to the transport of carbon dioxide. Oxygen transport we saw. Now we are discussing about the carbon dioxide transport. In carbon dioxide transport, the carbon dioxide is usually transported in three different forms. Oxygen we saw only two different forms. One is the dissolved one, another one is the hemoglobin bound one. Here also we have the dissolved one and hemoglobin bound form. The dissolved form is very less here also, 7 percentage. Hemoglobin bound form is also less, 23. The most commonly transported form of oxygen or carbon dioxide is nothing but the bicarbonate form. They are transported up to 70 percentage. Now coming to the CO2 uptake from the tissue. There we discuss from lung to the tissue. Here we have to discuss because CO2 is picked up from the tissue and given away in the lungs. So what happens in the tissue? In the tissue the CO2 is constantly produced. So they will be transported to the venous side. In the arterial blood the CO2 partial pressure is 40 mm of Hg only. The CO2 content, content is 48 ml of CO2. What will happen whenever it is going to the venous side? There is more, more, more and more partial pressure, high partial pressures in the tissue. So, it is giving CO2 to the venous side. In the venous side, the partial pressure of CO2 increases to 45 to 46 mm of H. And the content also should increase. The content increases to 52 ml of CO2. So, how much CO2 is carried for every 100 ml? 4 ml of CO2 is being carried for every 100 ml of blood. So, whenever the CO2 enters, it enters the plasma and then it goes to one important cell that is the RBC. So, whenever it goes to the RBC, as you can see here, the CO2 combines with water and they form the carbonic acid. This H2CO3 is formed in the presence of an enzyme which is called as carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme is nothing but the carbonic anhydrase. This, what is the purpose of this enzyme? This enzyme speeds up the reaction, you will not believe it, to 5000 times. This combination reaction, it speeds up to 5000 times. Then carbonic acid is formed. This is an universal reaction you will read across physiology, this carbonic acid formation. And finally, they will go into formation of bicarbonate and H+. This H plus formed, what it will do is, it will go and bind with the hemoglobin. Who was bringing the oxygen? The hemoglobin was bringing the oxygen till now. But right now what is happening is this H plus is coming and binding with this hemoglobin. So what will happen is there will be O2 release to the tissue. So whenever there is an high CO2 or high H plus O2 release to the tissue, what is the effect called as? It is called as the Bohr effect which we already saw. Now what will happen to this bicarbonate? The bicarbonate maximum motor is transported in the plasma not inside the RBC. But it is formed inside the RBC. Now somebody has to bring it to the plasma. Who brings it? There is an exchanger, one exchanger called as the bicarbonate exchanger. It is also called as anion exchanger. This exchanger brings the bicarbonate to the plasma. So, this exchanger is called as anion exchanger. Why it is called anion exchanger? It is bringing in bicarbonate and sending inside the chloride ions. So, both are anions, they are being exchanged. So, chloride goes in. But along with chloride, one more person also goes, that is water. So along with chloride, what is going in? Water is also going in. So what will happen to the size of the RBC in the venous side? Water is added, so size of the RBC will also be increased. That is the reason when you take the hematocrit of the venous blood and hematocrit of the arterial blood, usually the hematocrit of the venous blood is more than that of an arterial blood. The reason being addition of water. Here chloride is going in and taking the water with it. This anion exchanger is also called as chloride shift. This is also called as chloride shift. There is one more name also for this which we have to remember. We have to remember all these names. It is called as hamburger effect. It is like a hamburger which is shifting the ions. Hamburger burger effect. So, all these three names are the ones which is for the chloride shift. The chloride is going in along with water. Now, all this have the bicarbonate form has come to the blood and it is taken to the lung. So, let us see what happens in the lung. In the lung, what is our ultimate aim? Ultimate aim is to throw out the carbon dioxide. That is what all the respiratory system is doing, taking in oxygen and throwing out carbon dioxide. Here, H plus has already combined with the hemoglobin. It is traveling in that form. 
and bicarbonate is traveling in the plasma. So we have to eliminate both of them. So what will happen is this oxygen tension is very high. In the lung side, the alveolar oxygen tension is very high. So this oxygen can remove the H plus from here. So hemoglobin now will bind with the oxygen and it will release the H plus. Now this chloride should come out and bring in the bicarbonate again to the RBCs. So what is going to happen here? Here the chloride shift is going to reverse. So that is why this reaction is also called as reverse chloride shift. This reaction is also called as reverse chloride shift. So now chloride will come out and bicarbonate will move in. This bicarbonate again combines with H plus to form the classical carbonic acid which in turn will form the CO2 and H2O. So this CO2 will be thrown out. This CO2 will be thrown out easily. So this is the reaction. What is happening here? Here we can observe something very different. There is release of CO2 because of high oxygen tension. There we saw because of high carbon dioxide tension, O2 is being released. That is called as Bohr effect. Here there is release of CO2 from the hemoglobin in the presence of oxygen. This effect is called as Haldane effect. This effect is called as Haldane effect which is happening in the lung. Now there is a dissociation curve even for the carbon dioxide. That curve is called as carbon dioxide hemoglobin dissociation curve. In this curve there is one beautiful observation and the power of high oxygen tension is being shown. So here you can see here in the y -ax sorry, x axis it is PCO2 whereas in the x axis the carbon dioxide content is given. Here we are not talking about the percentage saturation. Here the content is given. All of us saw that the 48 AM ml was coming in the arterial side and 52 ml being loaded up in the venous side. The venous side is loading up the oxygen going into the lung. Now let's see what happens in the lung. The partial pressures of 45 is there in the venous side and 40 is there in the oxygen side. Usually, what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissue level? The tissue level partial pressure is 40 mm of Hg for oxygen. But in the lung, that partial pressure increases to PO2. But they wanted to study with two different curves. They have drawn two different curves for CO2, considering the oxygen tension at 40 and considering the oxygen tension at 100. 100 is the level set alveoli. So, they tried to do the experiment like this. So, what they did is they plotted two graphs like this. This one, the topmost one is the one which gives the partial pressure of oxygen 40 and compare the levels of hemoglobin. So, I'll compare the levels of CO2 release. So, what has happened is whenever the CO2 levels dropped from 45 to 40, the content of CO2 released, that is the content of CO2 that is given out in the atmosphere, from, it was from 52 to 50. So, how much content was given? Whenever the partial pressure of the oxygen was 40, the content was given only 2 ml could be thrown into the atmosphere. But alveolar partial pressure, all of us know it is not 40, it is 100. So, whenever the oxygen tension is increased, let us see how much of CO3 is thrown out. The second curve we have to compare. So, this is the point of starting point where the 45 is there and 52 ml is there. Here, we are going to reduce the CO2 levels also as well as oxygen tension is increasing. So whenever the curve was drawn, it came to this red curve and the curve plotted came towards here. As you can see here, the red curve is the original curve which is happening in the body. Instead of going from 52 to 50, now the curve shifted from 52 to 48 ml. What has that happened here? Here just the oxygen tension has increased. Whenever oxygen tension is increased, what I told you, there is more and more release of CO2. Ideally, there should have been release of 2 ml only. But because of high oxygen tension, there is a release of 4 ml. What is this effect? Whenever there is a high oxygen tension, the, oxy the CO2 is released. What is this effect? The effect is Haldane effect. So Haldane effect, what it did is, it has nearly doubled the release of CO2. If the oxygen tension was not high, only 2 ml would have been released. Since the oxygen tension was high, 4 ml is released, doubling the release of CO2. So that's why this has been asked repeatedly in MCQs also. Which effect is a best, better effect? Bohr effect or Haldane effect? It is obviously the Haldane effect because it is doubling up the CO2 expulsion.
So this is an important point to know to be noted.